On today's episode of the Duran Messinger Show, we're previewing and predicting number four TCU at Dillon, number 18 Texas. Texas is climbing up those rankings here, but so is TCU, of course. Longhorns fans, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. It's greatly appreciated. So to begin, Dylan, yes, as always, basic game info so people know where to tune in. The game will be Saturday the 12th at 6.30 p.m. Central Time at Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas. The game will be televised on ABC, Dylan, and the Longhorns, yes, the Longhorns are favored by seven points. So, Dylan, what are you feeling about this scouting report? Yeah, Devin, uh, this TCU team is definitely a Big 12 wet dream. The offense is the strength. And their defense is about average statistically, you know, comparative to the other teams in the in the conference as well. They're number one in total offense. They're number one in points at 43.1 per game. Number two in the run offense. Only point one behind Oklahoma, Devin. So looks like Oklahoma actually doing well at something this year. And then <laughs> careful, number three, careful there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, all right. And hey, with this offense though, Devin. They do like to make a lot of comebacks. They fell behind, not by too much against uh, Texas Tech, but they wanted to make it a little bit more difficult on themselves at home against the Red Raiders. And this is the first 9-0 start since 2010, Devin. But when we look at their impact players, obviously you've got 10-year senior Max Duggan. He's number one pass yards with 2,400 yards, Devin, and two interceptions. So he's protecting the ball really well this year and while also leading the Big 12 in passing yards. Uh, And he really likes to take those deep shots. He's a big playmaker. He'll make you pay with his legs while also just feasting on defenses with a great wide receiving uh, group. And Devin, honestly, with Max Duggan, I'd say him and yours are probably the two best quarterbacks in the Big 12. So this is going to be quite a a showdown to see, you know, who's really going to lead their team to the ultimately the Big 12 championship because, you know, Texas is looking to control their own destiny with this game. They can come out on top. But to do that, like I said, with the wide receiving group, Devin, that arguably might, is probably the best one in the Big 12, if not the nation. I mean, they're up there. And at their number one option, they got Quinton Johnson. He's a potential first-round pick, all-around receiver. He's used in pretty much any fashion, any kind of rouse. He's not really just a short guy or intermediate route guy, or deep ball. You can just do everything. Leads the team in yards and receptions. And then you got Tay Barber as well, Devin. He's explosive. He goes to those intermediate routes. He's a guy you got to be really careful. Texas has really, really struggled covering that middle of the field. It felt like Kansas State just kept getting back into the game because the receiver just in the middle of the field had about 20 yards to work with in that area. And then next up is Darius Davis, Evan. This guy is an absolute speedster. He had a punt return touchdown against Texas Tech where I think he made all 11 guys miss on his way to the end zone. And he's a guy that you can just get the ball in his hands. It's pretty much all over. And then you have big 6'5 receiver in Savion Williams. He doesn't get targeted as much as these other guys, but once you do kind of forget about him in a sense, he's going to make that big play. So... He's a guy that Texas cannot let have a big game. Quinn Johnson is going to get his. Tay Barr is going to get his. Darius Davis is going to get his. But if Savion Williams comes out with, you know, five catches and about 100 yards, it's going to be really hard for the Longhorns to overcome that. As well as another big target, Devin, your boy, probably not happy about this, but Jared Wiley. <laughs> yeah, my boy. Yeah, yep. I died and, for uh, a since. I'm sorry. He had to hurt you like that. But did transfer to TCU. He's got four touchdowns, and you're another guy you got to really uh, look out for. But, Devin, those are some impact players I'm looking at uh, on this scouting report, at least for the offense. No, no, you listed all the names and some. I'm only, only going to list I, some of the names. Actually, I mean, you got plenty of guys to talk about. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. But I'm going to just touch on some of the ones that you talked about. Uh, Max Duggan, Dylan, in his history, has seemingly been a Longhorn killer. Not effective 100% of the time, of course, but especially this season, as you've been talking about, he's been slaying other Big 12 Dragons. You were talking about the pass yardage and the interceptions at just two, but Dylan, 24 touchdowns. That's a uh, 12 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio. For Duggan, I mean, that's incredible given the fact that, you know, throughout his history, Dylan, you know, in the 10 year uh, senior career, as you were alluding to, that he's had. You know, he's usually predominantly known as being a running quarterback. 
if you check the stats, he has rushing yards, of course, but it's actually nothing too crazy, Dylan, which is kind of scary because, you know, TCU, if you're Coach Dykes, you know, maybe this is the uh, game where you finally really let him loose. But, I mean, if you watch highlights of any TCU game, of course, you know, he scampers for the first down when they need it, Dylan. But then did you even mention Kendra Miller out of the uh, backfield, one of the best running backs in the conference? You know, I don't want to say the best. Uh, a lot of Texas fans, Dylan, are listening here at the Bijan and Co., terrible Devin that's the thing I'm sure TCU fans have been clamoring about hey we actually might have the best backfield uh in Texas at least yeah and then you know Deuce Vaughn comes out the back door and on my screen and probably also tries to get into that conversation talking about that a uh, Texas middle linebacker core and a uh, secondary there Dylan Deuce Vaughn was you know not too effective running the football the defensive front did a good job there but as you're talking about when it comes to, like Tay Barber and that middle of the field there's Always. going to be a lot of challenges for Texas in this game. But yes, Miller, he has just over 1,000 rushing yards this season so far and 12 touchdowns. But then as you mentioned, you know, the receiving core is, is what it is. I mean, Quentin Johnston, 6'4 receiver. Dylan, fun fact for you, former Texas commit. I know that all too well, along with, you know, the boy, Jared Wiley. Dylan wants a Longhorn, always a Longhorn. You know, going to love him forever, but hopefully... You want to say that to a Horned Frog now? Or? Well, no, he, he's still still in good faith, a Longhorn. But, okay. you know, if you're a Texas fan, you're going to hope that his damage is limited in this game. But as you said, Tay Barber as well, and then a plethora of other guys. Just a lot of offensive threats in general. But then Dylan, defensively, maybe I'm sorry, not... Sorry, in that backfield, don't forget about Amari DiMarcado tough name to pronounce at least but i mean that's a similar change of pace running back in the sense of like roshan johnson that tandem back there something to be concerned about for texas yeah yeah dylan your the pronunciations are just a plus today but you know we still got the defense to go here and i know there's some tricky names that i will uh be pausing on here but the defense as i was just joking about here Really linebacker heavy, Dylan, at least as they listed on the roster. You know, the uh, flexibility and fluidity of linebackers in today's game is all over the charts. But defensively, Johnny Hodges leading the way, Dylan, with the 55 tackles, followed closely by Jamoy Hodge and safety Mark Perry, tackles wise. Those two guys have 53 and 52 tackles, respectively. But, Dylan, if you look at, you know, the scores, throughout the season for TCU that defense isn't doing too hot at least compared to you know certain old days that a TCU was used to defensively I know they've had their struggles you know I'm not gonna talk ill of the Horn Frogs but then the guy to watch out for another linebacker technically based off roster is D Winters Dylan he leads the team with six and a half sacks and then of course prior to the season if you were you know paying attention to any mock drafts Dylan cornerback Travis Hodges Tomlinson and other Hodges you know is there a Hodges factory in Fort Worth I don't know but Hodges Tomlinson is a guy to watch out for in that secondary as well they yet again haven't been producing maybe stats that they would typically like to in you know a typical TCU season but there's a lot of playmakers still in that secondary that can cause havoc but how do you feel about that defense uh, it's interesting. I mean, they're pretty average in the sense of like the Big 12, like we were talking about earlier. And they were getting pretty ripped apart by Morton Devin last week on Texas Tech. He was about 7 for 10. And he eventually limped off uh, later in the game. I think it was in the second quarter while Tech was keeping it close. And then Shook came in and, and the Horn Frogs just kind of pounced on him. And it was all over at that point. But another big thing was those. Uh, Red Raider running backs, they both were over 5.8 yards per carry, but that game script, as the game went on and Shook was struggling to make those throws for Tech, uh, just kind of fell apart. They had to go away from that running game, and that's when uh, TCU started really pulling away with that offense, and the defense was coming away with the uh, the right amount of stops. But no, Devin, like I said, like this TCU defense, it's not, it's not the strength of the team, and it's not – like when people are talking about the college football playoff and why TCU might not belong in there with the other top teams, that defense is mostly what comes up. That offense can is one of the best in the country, but that defense holds them back. So it's going to be interesting, interesting to see how this Texas offense that is also very talented 
will go up against this uh, Horn Frog defense. You know, uh, you know Hodges jokes, Dylan. I mean, I tried to fit it in earlier, but I th- I thought you were keeping up your sleeve. I mean, don't let that sit there. Maybe uh, later in the video you can introduce yeah, your uh, no. your patented nickname. But X Factors, Dylan. What are you feeling here? Who should we be watching in terms of making a uh, you know difference in this game? Yeah, it wasn't necessarily players. As of uh, as I'm looking at it, it's more the narrative going into this, Devin. When we talk about Texas, it's a lot of, oh, they're starting off really strong in that first half. Then the second half happens, and the coaching staff and the team kind of just forgets how to play. Offense kind of goes stale. The defense plays almost a bend-don't-break type of style. And teams like Kansas State just come all the way back, or Oklahoma State just stay in it, and Texas um, refuses to put, put the game away. Then you got TCU on the other side who – let some inferior teams stay in the game or get out to leads, and then they have to pull out comebacks uh, in the second half. That's kind of what's been held against them uh, most of the year. And so it's going to be interesting to see how Texas goes up against that because it's two things colliding, and one of them's got to give, or it kind of just fits perfectly uh, for TCU in the sense of Texas is going to get out to a lead, TCU is going to come back, and ultimately – we're going to be talking about next week how Texas kind of screwed themselves out of a chance to control their own destiny. Yeah, and Dylan, I mean, if you have to take two halves, I think most uh, coaches would probably opt to take the second half, you know, just yeah. objectively speaking. But, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if Texas can take advantage of that and get out to a big first-half lead like they have seemingly been able to do. But yet again, as you were talking about, I mean, they almost let it slip again against Kansas State. Of course, didn't happen. Longhorns fans, take a deep breath. I didn't say anything. But still, you know, quite alarming, but not totally alarming just yet. But yet again, maybe this weekend we'll see. Yet again, Devin Tangent there. X Factor for me, Dylan. Get ready for it. Gary Patterson. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, TCU fans. It's okay. Revenge game? Gary it's, Patterson revenge game? Is that what I'm hearing? Gary Patterson revenge game. I mean, I know that he's probably a little bit fired up just knowing a coach p but no you know he obviously is going to be in sark's ear this week for prep dylan you know who knows the tcu roster better than him on that texas staff of course nobody but i'm going to go you know the easy answer here relatively i mean position groups and players aside you could list about anybody in this game but i'm going to go with Bijan robinson for the sole fact that his play of course is going to set up you know quinn ewers's ability in the pocket and defense in terms of time of possession. Bijan went off last weekend and has Dylan crept his way back into that Heisman race, you know, quietly. Of course, Dylan though, the Heisman typically in years past, at least recent history, has only been going to teams that have been contending for that national title. So if Bijan wants to, you know, inch his way up here, here's a good opportunity to at least get a little bit more into the conversation. I'm not saying national title. No one get to a a, a hot take land over there. But Bijan Dillon, if he has a good game, as you're talking about the uh, Tech running backs and their average yards per carry, if Bijan you know can you know force TCU's hand to you know stack the box or something and test Quinn Ewers' arm, I mean, that's okay. Of course, if it's a Oklahoma State-like game for Ewers, not going to be too great. But, you know, I think we and most college coaches in general, at least facing Texas, probably have a little more faith in Ewers than that game would indicate. But overall, Dylan, you know, Roshan Johnson too, even Keelan Robinson when he gets his looks, they have a plethora of backs that they can throw out there. But in this game, you don't really want to get into a scoring fight with TCU. As you've mentioned, their offense has been pretty lethal this season you're going to want to be able to hold the ball a little bit get the defense a little bit of a breather as well so i am going Bijan there although dylan gary patterson very tempting answer for me maybe if you had a bigger you know role we're not really sure what his role is you know people ask uh coach sark all the time what it is we're not really sure quite yet but uh you know if he had a bigger role with the team and was able to technically coach then you know maybe i'd say that's the x factor here but uh, dylan how are you feeling about that danger level I feel like when we're talking about games, this one's definitely comfortably sitting at a 10, Devin, for me. This is a high-powered 
TCU offense, when we look at just everything at playmaker wise on that offense, it's all very hard to stop. I, Texas, the defense, definitely one of the better ones in the big 12, a lot, I would say better than TCU's, but this offense just, it's, it's hard for anybody to stop and TCU looking to make it to the college football playoff. There's a lot on the line for them while also Texas is trying to, you know, regain their season, have that, a uh, great win, that uh, impact win, statement win, better yet, for Sark and this program to really build off of. And I'm just curious to see, like, is that going to come to fruition? Is this the game that we go, okay, things are headed in the right direction? Because Texas has shown that it falls flat in the second half. Offense starts to kind of go on those three and outs, puts their defense in poor situations to kind of get gassed, get tired, and – teams ultimately just take over in that sense and uh texas is trying then to you know build momentum back later on and i it's gonna be tough that's that's why i i've got it sitting at a 10 here uh especially with this defense leaving and leaving that center of the field open and ryan watts and deshaun james are gonna be having a long day devin uh that that's for sure <laughs> yeah dylan they're working a double shift day on saturday out in the secondary and that is definitely a position group, as we've talked about already a couple times in this video, that we are going to be concerned about when watching. Ryan Watts, you know, so far this season, Dylan, you know, maybe a sneaky sort of all-conference uh, candidate right there. But yet again, there's a plethora of wideouts that, you know, are going to pose challenges for that group. You know, Dylan, I was really tempting to give it like an eight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to up it to nine. You convinced me there. I mean, you know, what am I saving the extra ratings for at this point? I don't know. You know, TCU is the fourth-ranked team in the country for a good reason. You know, Dylan, it is a home game for Texas. Maybe that's why I'm going to lay off the 10. But, I mean, you know, this game for Texas, for TCU as well, this is, you know, their chance to fight for that Big 12 title spot. Dylan, if they lose this, of course, it's a little more up in the air I know at least for Texas, if they lose this game, definitely going to hurt their title odds just in general. TCU, a little bit better ground thanks to being undefeated as you were talking about. But giving it a 9, I'm going to upgrade it there. Duggan, the Longhorn Slayer, Dylan, you know, yet again, not 100% time it works. You know, 60% of the time it works every time. But in football, 60% of the time you're going to slang somebody that's uh, pretty good. Now, Dylan, how are you feeling about the prediction overall with the college game day you know crowd too being there yeah no this is tough Devin, because you're looking at the spread at least before the game you're like huh you know texas is favored by seven over a top four team why is that and it, i have a feeling that it's because vegas and a lot of odds makers and just the national media in general really like that talent that texas has i mean when you look at it you got Bijan robinson you got Roshan Johnson as well in the backfield. You got Keelan Robinson, Hi. who's also a great third player as well. I mean, him, whenever he gets the ball in his hands, he makes plays. That's And Texas wants to get him involved. And you got Xavier Worthy. You got Jordan Whittington, Jatavian Sanders. These are guys that are just all-stars in the college college football uh, uh, you know, conference and, and just nationally. So – as well as Ewers being able to get the ball to them at whenever he wants and has looked, you know, not as great as he did at the beginning of the season, but it's still looking like the Ewers we are all hoping he would look like. And also, like, so we are taking that all into account, Devin. Second half, it's a whole other story. Just seemingly <laughs> teams just come back. I know I keep bringing it up, but that's just how it feels. And it feels like you're going to come down to that one moment. I feel like everyone watching the game – is going to know what kind of play it is, whether it's, you know, late into the third quarter, fourth quarter, Texas might be up seven points. They got to get this first down or they need this touchdown in the red zone. And they're ultimately going to settle for a field goal, turnover on downs, give the ball away. And then that kind of just changes the game in TCU's favor. It's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this game, Devin. Um, running, you know, the, the vibes on my stats. I'm, I'm just going to have to go with TCU. 49 to 45 Texas shows that they're going in the right direction, but I just don't know if it all comes together in the perfect, uh, perfect way that uh, fans are hoping for here. You know, that's fair enough, Dylan. I have Texas winning 38 to 34. I okay. paused there all because, right. you know, it still, still was time to change my answer before I uttered that out. 
But uh, Dylan, I did pick against Texas last weekend. They proved me wrong. Kansas State, you know, Deuce Vaughn, just love the guy. Not that I was rooting for either team, but, you know, Deuce Vaughn, Dylan, you know, was letting down the uh, Wildcats fans in terms of just going total Christian McCaffrey. He was pretty close to a total Christian McCaffrey for part of that game, though. But Dylan, yeah, not feeling too confident in this game. You know, tale of two halves for Texas, quite literally, in every single game. They still are the 18th ranked team in the country. You listed all the, you know, offensive threats there. Defensive front has been, you know, pulling its weight. Linebacker core led by Jalen Ford has really come into play, especially with this home crowd, as I was mentioning just a tiny bit there the college game day atmosphere is going to quite literally be there before the game that's going to be critical part for the defense can they fuel off the crowd but hopefully if you're a longhorn fan it kind of works both ways there the yin and the yang but yet again talking about all these offensive threats for texas dylan i mean you listed them all off before in the scouting report tcu also has their fair list of threats you know, led by Max Duggan, who quite possibly could be the Big 12 player of the year when the season's all said and done, especially after a great performance today. I, I don't really know, Dylan, yet. Texas is favored by seven here. I can't really feel comfortable with any of this. Bijan, like I said, if Texas wants to win, is going to have to have a great game. Quinn Ewers is going to have to stay away from the turnover column. And, you know, maybe more importantly, at least in the recent weeks, keep the completion percentage up as well. Usually that's not a category done we have to mention for quarterbacks here. But, you know, it just has to be said. But he has his threats. Xavier Worthy, Whittington, Jatavian Sanders. Dealing with that semi-shaky TCU defense, maybe this is the year that Texas can pull off the upset. And I believe don't – well, no, I, I could be wrong here, so fact check me if you want. But I believe it's been 20 years – since a top five team has been beaten at DKR on the road, or the road team being beaten. Which, Dylan, also, I saw that stat being thrown around earlier in the week, and I also thought, how many times, you know, is a top five team coming into uh, Austin anyway in the first place with a lot of the uh, Oklahoma matchups in Dallas? But, Dylan, Dylan, you know, we, we forget about the facts there sometimes, you know, when it comes to stats, it can be presented nice and pretty. But uh, I do have Texas, Dylan, that's a long rant. I don't feel comfortable about it. I do have 38 to 34, but more importantly, Seven. who do you guys let have? Get, yeah. Let me give you be confident about though. All right. Let me let, Hey, no, Texas was forming against Kansas state. I liked how the defense was playing. They got very physical. That's something to look at. This offensive line for TCU has struggled in pass protection. If Texas can make Duggan really uncomfortable, Hey, maybe your pick happens. I'm just saying. Yeah, just saying. maybe, maybe, okay. but or has I'm it, right. yeah, right. maybe you are. But yet again, not not too much confidence coming from this group this season. If you guys have watched all the games like we have, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. But yet again, Dylan, you know, this is going to be a fun weekend for football. Everyone enjoy it. It's November. You know, the temperature is probably going to be nice and a little bit cool, you know, if you're in Austin. But enjoy the game. But more importantly than the temperature, Dylan, you guys watching, what is your score prediction? Let us know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, have a great rest of your day.